What do we do when God doesn't make sense? What do we do? What do we do when we're confused? What do we do when we just don't have the strength? We can't do it anymore. What do we do? What did Job do? Fell on his face. Worshiped God. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave. The Lord's taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Notice what he didn't do. He didn't complain. He never asked God why. He merely stated who God is and who he is. He basically says, I am nothing but one little tiny speck in all of his creation that comes and goes at his reckoning. That is all I am is his prerogative, praise his holy name. He knew who God was, and he knew who he was. That is stunning to me. That is just stunning to me. After all he'd been through, after all that he'd lost, that was his reaction. And it's the most powerful example that shows he knows who he is. Not to mention who Almighty God is. The king of the world, he knows it. This holds a key to freedom for us. Because we can say that with the same sincerity. I don't know what's going on, God, but I praise you. I don't know what's going on, but I trust you. I don't know why that you allowed, you started this building project four years ago. You have shown your hand and made this happen every single time knowing you would send a pandemic. Why? Why did he do that? I don't know. And I don't have to know. Because he is God, and I am not. I know who he is, and I know who I am. I trust him, even when I don't feel like it, because I don't rely on my feelings. Even when I don't have any idea what's going on or why, I trust him. Because he's good, and he's still on his throne, and my outcome does not determine his goodness. He is good, period. Nothing about me determines anything about him. He determines me, not the other way around. He is God, and I am not. I heard this woman on BBN the other day um, giving her testimony. She'd suffered adultery and she'd lost everything. Lost everything. But she came to Christ through it. She came to Christ through it. And as she shared her story, she kept repeating over and over again, if this is what it took, then praise God for it. If this is what needed to happen to me so I would meet the giver of eternal life, then praise God for it. That's what she just kept saying over and over again. Praise God for it. You know, it's amazing what happens when we put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Isaiah 61.3. God inhabits the praises of his people, Psalm 22.3. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Total focus on the most high God frees you from your circumstances. It's freeing. It's liberating. Scripture just said that. Now, don't be mistaken. I did not say the presence of God changes your circumstances. I did not say that. The presence of God changes you. The presence of God changes you. It won't change your situation. It changes how you deal with your situation. It's not some kind of magic potion that just makes our problems disappear. It shifts our perspective from our problems onto the solution. 
just like Job. That's what he did. He knew who God was, and he knew who he was.